Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Pavin, an Olympian and beach volleyball world champion and a longtime professional indoor player. And I'm Adam, former indoor player and coach, current beach volleyball coach, and most importantly, Sarah's husband. <sighs> the last two episodes have sparked a lot of discussion. I... About an ace, about the Hinata Kageyama saga, Hinata wanting to evolve and be more, lots of back and forth. I've really liked the discussion that it sparked. I like, and, and I think all of it is normal experiences that kids at this level are having as they transition, as they get better, as they figure out what playing in a team means, what does individual success mean versus the team, how everybody navigates it. Like, it's just been, it's been really realistic and really on point. Um, and I've enjoyed talking about it and I've enjoyed everybody's comments like everybody has a different opinion some opinions have you know hindsight in them you've seen the whole mm -hmm. series some people are giving their opinion at this moment in time about their own experience it's been it's been awesome actually yeah um, I think most people agreed with you <clears throat> on your ace take some people did not but, but I'm I, okay with that. Yeah. We don't all have to agree here. I am just speaking from personal experience and what it's like to actually like be in that position, um, which is no more or less valid than somebody else's experience. But um, yeah, it's, I enjoy talking about this stuff. I enjoy even debating this stuff. Like I will talk about it forever, so. Hit me up if you want to go toe to toe on it. I would love it. Um, but today we are watching season two, episode six of High called Tempo. We laughed the last episode. Kageyama and Hinata got into it. Okay, like full physical altercation here. Things got awkward. Yachi didn't know what to do. The third <laughs> years, the third years are like, okay, like they'll figure it out. Um, but of course, Tanaka was the guy that broke it up because he's the ultimate senpai. Um, so conflict has brewed. Which is totally normal in teammates. I think that this is a completely normal interaction for sport. I can say I have broken up several fights between high school boys in a team situation. Um, so it's, you know, you're emotional, you want to win, you want to get better, you know, you have the same goal but different paths of getting there, the frustration boils over, it all, it all makes sense. Um, and, it's, and it's pretty common, I would say. I, the, the resolution is what I'm curious mm -hmm. about, how do they work through it? Who steps in? Does Ukai get involved? Is it dealt with as a team? Do the two of them just figure it out? I'm curious to see what the resolution in this situation is, because it can take many different paths. Well, let's find out. Season two, episode six of Haikyuu is coming right now. I can see you raising your eyebrows beside me. Oh, really? The ultimate teacher. He must be the the legend. Oh, it is him. We meet the legend. Could you seriously? Did you say I can hear your eyebrows? No, I just like, out of the corner of my eye, I could just see like, 
a little facial movement with your eyebrows going up and down and I knew so I've watched back enough no! episodes to know that when something is happening and normally when we're at home like I'm sitting slightly in front of you so I can't see anything until I see it on video but we're even here and so I just saw I just saw your eyebrows going up and down darn it I oh you figured out my, my secret my trick there have been enough comments of people being like I love Sarah's like eyebrow raise when something's gonna happen and Adam has no idea what's going on okay lesson learned don't do that at this location no you can't do it here okay well it's just because my eyebrows are so expressive you know I mean that is true <laughs> I've the seen muscles in... that are hiding under the sparse blonde hairs I've seen your expressive <clears throat> eyebrows in many different situations um, yes, the man, the myth, the legend, Grandpa Ukai. I'm, so I'm, I'm curious, like did, oh I gotta call him Little Ukai now. Did he bring him here because he doesn't know how to handle the situation? Is he looking for advice? Is he, is he bringing them here so that they can sit down and just like hear it from a different voice? I'm curious like where the interaction goes and like what the, I'm curious what little Ukai's thought process was around this, but. Great questions, yeah. great questions. I'm you will get the answers. I'm excited, I'm excited. Um, what do you think Kageyama's up to? Uh, I kind of assumed he was outside and he was showing up to this as well, but. Outside where? Uh, he was at like a elementary school. Yeah, uh, well he was just coaching kids, wasn't he? Hagiyama? No, Grandpa Ukai. I thought they I thought they were pop. My assumption was they were told to meet at the same place. Adam, they were Ukai was literally in a backyard in the country. Okay. I, I made a I made a mistake then. Uh, okay. I don't know. I'm not sure then. I have no idea. Alright, question backfired. Here we go. <clears throat> yeah. He's Thank you for noticing. I love that. だれから構わず分投げたりしねえよ。根性なしだけだ。その身長で空中戦を制したいと。この身長だからです。え？だけに空スパンス。変なこと言ってるのかもしれないけど。何が変なんだ？ たとえどんな天才セッターが相手だろうとそこという攻撃においてお前だおいかさん何してるんすかおいっ子の付き添いおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおお
あああのもし大会が近いのにえっと岩泉さんが無茶な攻撃をやるって言い出したらちょっと何か相談したいなら下手くそな例え話やめて直球で着ない No nonsense 今までボールを見ずに打っていた速攻日向が自分の意思で打ちたいって言い出しましたへえできたらすごいじゃんやればそんな簡単に言わないでください日向には技術なんてないんですよだから俺の言う通りにだけ動いてろってまるで独裁者だねお,お前は考えたのチビちゃんが欲しいトスに 100% 答えているか答える努力をしたのか影山トス上げてくれよ現状がベストだと思い込んで守りに入るとは随分ビビリだね勘違いするな攻撃の主導権を握ってるのはお前じゃなくチビちゃんだそれを理解できないならお前は独裁の王様に逆戻りだ行くよタケルはい。What has happened. Now the hitter is in control. Okay.、Right? So Kagiyama to this point has been going, run here, just swing, I'm going to set you. So he is, he is dictating everything that is happening, and Hinata has basically no autonomy to do anything. He either sends him to the right spot, gives him the perfect ball, and he scores or he doesn't score. I think what they're saying to me is, as a setter, You, you really don't have any control. You can make all of the right decisions and your hitter can still screw it up. Or you can make all of the wrong decisions and your hitter might score. You, you really you lead the offense, but you're not the final say. And if you try and control everything, you don't allow your hitters any of their own ability to make the plays. And that's what Oikawa does really well. <clears throat> right? He puts his hitters in the best position for them to do well. And I think that's, to me, that's how I took that. How did you take it? Well, I just kept thinking about what I said last episode where I was saying how Hinata wants to, you know, fight on his own, but due to the nature of his position, he is so tightly bound to the setter. And so I feel like the statement of like, um, The hitter is the one who's in charge, like contradicts that. But I still really strongly believe what I said. I just feel like the relationship between a middle and a setter specifically is so dependent on both parties. And I like the hitter's timing has to be perfect. So that is up to the hitter for sure.、Mm -hmm. Creating that timing and the, the window with their arms for the, hit, the setter to find the perfect location. And then, you know, what direction the hitter hits is obviously up to the hitter. But because of the speed of the attack, I feel like the setter is critical. So I don't know. I'm having trouble with that exact phrasing. Yeah. I think, well, I think a couple things. I mean, we're going to deviate a little bit here. If we're talking about middles atta middle attacks, like that middle is also finding seams in the block, putting themselves in a position. You open your shoulders one way to take the ball here. You see the blocker, you snap it back this way. Like, there are definitely things that a middle can do. And specifically in this case, with Hinata just closing his eyes, he's not making any decisions. No, I know.、Yeah. I guess if I tie it back to the Tsukushima discussion from season one, how he was like, I know what I'm doing. Give me like the set that I want. Like, okay, yes, if we're talking strictly like in that sense, like, sure.、Mm -hmm. um, I guess I don't want to, I don't, 
I feel like they're minimizing the setter's impact. Yeah, I, I think that it was less... I didn't take it that way personally. Mm. It was more like, if you try and control everything... I, honestly, the first thing I thought about was like, helicopter parents. <sighs> like, if you're, if you're there all the time and you give your kid no autonomy, they don't learn, they don't grow, they don't make any of their own decisions. It's like, you do your best job and then it's out of your hands. That's kind of how I pictured that. Okay. That's, I can get behind that idea more. Yeah. ご機嫌かとおる。思ってた以上に飛び屋がポンコツで嬉しいね。俺だけブレブレじゃんか。まずは<笑><笑> ちょうど手に当たってスパーンって決まる感じです。いや、つまりこいつが目をつぶって飛んだところに影山って やってみるのが早いな。ちびすけ、ちょっとブロックしてみろ。ミドルブロッカーなんだろ。止めてみな。He's <笑> This is an excellent explanation. Yeah. だ。早い。ブロックできるか。少なくとも一人じゃ無理。と思います。今の三つの店舗、スパイカーの打ち方に大きな違いはあるか。ないと思う。ます。では何が違った？I love that they're teaching everybody and Hinata at the same time. Yeah.タイミング。そうだ。それが店舗。いいか。攻撃の速さは全てこのテンポで区分される。トスのボールのスピードが速いとか遅いとかじゃなく、スパイカーの助走開始のタイミングの違い。それの最も速いのがファーストテンポ。敵ブロックの回避に最も有効な技
And I, I, actually the thing, so yes, I agree with that, but the thing that I, I took out of that the most was like, you can do it, but you have to understand it. And I think that is such an important concept when you're learning a sport, because it's like, I, okay, I want to feel good. I want to be able to do the skill. And so we start teaching kids like how to do things, but then it's like, when do you layer in the understanding and the decision making and like, I just, I love that kind of sentiment of like, you're freakishly athletic, but you don't understand anything. I mean, put in this context with tempo, like I can understand better what they're saying as far as like the hitter controls things. Like, okay, yes. When put this way, like the speed of your approach dictates a hundred percent. The other thing though, the setter needs to be aware. The setter needs to know what, what you're doing. Yeah. So it is still, I think, a very collaborative attack. Like, before every play, the setter is, like, telling the hitters what to run so everybody's on the same page. So, yes, while the tempo of the attacker gives the attacker the autonomy and the control, like, if the attacker thinks they're coming in for a second tempo and the setter... Because it is, like, you can kind of see the movement as you're setting, but, like, if the setter isn't 100% on the same page, like, it's still not an autonomous thing. No, and, and I think, yeah, it's not autonomous for sure. Like, you have to be in lockstep. Um, I think it's more of just, like, they're trying to empower Hinata at this point. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, I understand that. I'm just... Yeah, no, I agree. I agree with you. It's definitely, you definitely need to be in alignment. Otherwise, it doesn't work at all. Just stay here. <laughs> He's going to get Kakiyama.一秒。一秒早く。てっぺん。でも、それだけじゃ足りないんです。今まで俺が石を持って動くのは、てっぺんまでだったけど。これからは、てっぺんでも戦いたいということか。うん。それには、お前の相棒にも改善が必要なわけ
The light bulb went off yeah. in Ukai's uh, brain. Keep working on that serve, buddy. <laughs> Good place to start. Good place to start. I love that. <laughs> ボール。ボール。ボール。ボール。ボール。ボール。ボール。ボール。ボール。ボール。ボール。ボール。ボール。ボール。ボール。ボール。ボール。ボール。ボール。ボール。ボール。ボール。ボール。ボール。ボール。
Super punch? Your punch really worked. They're gonna die. あと、京都の前でもダメだぞ。それ以外でやれ。よし。平田はしばらく試合形式の時はBチームに入れ。菅原頼む。はい。よし。平田 <laughs> She's so cute. Oh, Mishimiya. Anosa, Joshi no den shiwa te kara taifu kan shimeru made mo skoshi de inda kudo koto tsukawase te morae nai kato yutte sa. She's put on her face. Mishimiya, dai ni taifu kan dou ka shita no? いや、ちょっとさ、全く別の自主練をやりたいやつが多くて、私はっていいんだよね。I love this. I have goosebumps. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This is how you become good. これだ。これだ。これって、ブラジルの攻撃の動画。一斉に動き出した。確かに、新前の攻撃がこんなだったな。えっと、シンクロ攻撃。I mean, kudos to her. That's not as easy as you think it is. Oh, wow. すげえ頼む。あの、うまいこと。前から言おうと思ってたんですけど、俺、シビスケじゃないんですけど。下手くそはシビスケで十分だ。俺、いつもシビスケ。お願いします。手に力で飛ぶことで意識を向けろ。I also play fine while the dark is very hard. できるじゃないか。いつでも誰がセッターでも自分の意思でボールを捌けるようになるんだ。です。オッケー。合わせようとするだろ。自分のタイミングで飛ぶんだ。他の誰でもね。自分の意思で戦え。お願いします。ファン
one or two skills that they can like take to the next level and like that's incredible I yeah. love it you don't ever want to stay like stagnant like even if you're at the top everybody is trying to beat you so like even when you're the best and Kirasuno isn't the best right now but they want to be you have to keep evolving and making adjustments and finding new ways to get better so I think that this is great yeah and it's how when everybody gets a little bit better the team gets better and you're just driving like he's like I saw he's like I gotta serve and then uh, Noya's passing and then he's like I want to set yeah. and I saw he's like what fine like and and it just <laughs> it just builds and that it's contagious yeah. in, within a team uh, that's super cool to see This music is so perfect. I love that they have their own little arc. <laughs> oh boy. Gotta keep that hand on the ball. すげえ<笑><笑> ビーターをガイフォーミー。ビーターをガイフォーミー。ビーターをガイフォーミー。ビーターをガイフォーミー。ビーターをガイフォーミー。ビーターをガイフォーミー。ビーターをガイフォーミー。ビーターをガイフォ
working on new things which can be incredibly frustrating like learning new skills or like making adjustments to things that you've done for so long is hard and frustrating but like the commitment to it that you're seeing um it's inspiring and i love how everybody's kind of going about it in their own way as you see yamaguchi like he's training at the shimada mart and you know Noya is getting advice from Suga and then like Suga and Asahi or sorry Noya and Asahi have kind of become like a duo helping each other like it's just really really cool um Hinata doing his private training with the group in in the countryside so I it's an inspiring episode for me what so I have two thoughts what do you think about the nickname Shrimpy and and, and how Grandpa Ukai is like progressing him through that, like, because it's a little bit demeaning. Yes. You know, and he and he says, "Hey, can you not do this?" And he goes, "No, sorry, this this is where <laughs> you're at." You know, which is tough love, and and now he's shrimpo, which is which is a little a little bit better. It's like it's it it's kind of I would say it's a little bit old school, but it's it creates that ability for him to like feel his progression and and earn that respect, which also means earning confidence for himself. Yeah, and I mean, coaches of that era don't give compliments. And so the little change is like probably one of the closest things to a compliment that he will get. Um, so you just have to kind of like hold on to that because like if he not is expecting a pat on the back, he's not going to get it. So like to find little ways of prey of finding praise i think it's important and then if ukai grandpa ukai actually gives a compliment then that means like the world. you're incredible um so yeah that was great goosebumps several times and, um, the, and i was gonna say the last thing i was thinking is i'm curious how you know sometimes when everybody goes and kind of does their own training and works on their own skills like how does that come together when they start competing you know, Kageyama's working on a set, Hinata's working on a hit, how does that come together? You know, what happens if Noya goes to jump set at a critical point, it like slides through his hands or he shoots it too far? Like there's gonna be some growing pains with all of this change and then how do they, how do they manage that? They've got a whole new one, two, three tempo offense. How does Ukai, you know, mold that? There's, it's not gonna be seamless. They're not just gonna win those matches and how I'm curious to see how they mesh all those things together at the at the next kind of competition. I mean, they're probably going to get worse before they get better. Yeah. That's usually how it goes, but you just have to fight through the, the downward dip and then come out the other side. So they're heading back to Tokyo, so we'll see it in, in live action against all these other teams at the training camp. Um, let us know your thoughts. Okay. We know that you guys love season two. We all love season two. It's Adam been a banger so far. Is loving season two. So let us know your thoughts. Um, as always, we would be so happy if you would like this video, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned because we are going back to Tokyo and hopefully we get less cameos of Ubagawa Guy. Okay. <laughs> Bye, you guys.